A very good morning to you all. I'm back again with a history class and I hope that you're all doing good at home. So today's class, we shall further discuss about the Stone Age and the Metal Age. So in the previous class, I had explained about the different metal, I'm sorry, different Stone Age. So under that, we came across with the Paleolithic, Mesolithic and the Neolithic period. And today we are going to discuss further with the another concept called as Metal Age. So it's a very brief history. See, coming towards a Metal Age, from the Stone Age, it was a period of transition. It was a period of transition. In fact, the metals had replaced the stones. Many number of implements that were used out of stone were all replaced by the metals. But still, the stone use was not completely declined. It did not end up there itself. It was used hand in hand or side by side. Now related to the metal age, how did this create a role in the history of India? Indeed, let's go back to find out how it created an impact. Well, related to the metal age, gold was actually one of the precious metal that attracted the eyes of these primitive class of people. But unfortunately, gold was only used for ornaments because it was quite shiny, very soft and it was inner scarce which was used only for the limited purpose. But gradually what happened was the gold was replaced by another metal called as copper. With the coming of copper, with the usage of copper, that era or that age itself was called as copper age. Under the metal age, we are going to study about three different metal ages. Number one, copper age. Number two, bronze age. Number three, iron age. I hope I'm clear with you. Copper replaced the gold and copper was used in a large scale in India. Well, looking at this part, the North Indian Stone Age, we could say that they started using the copper. But still, there is no uniformity of opinion where and all in India were copper used. But presumably, historians have given this opinion that the North Indian Stone Age or the North Indian New Stone Age used copper and that's the reason why it was called as Copper Age. Regarding the South Indian New Stone Age, in South India large number of iron was used and henceforth it was called as Iron Age. I hope you are clear with that point. Now, let's first examine the Copper Age. We do not have a specific date regarding the origin of this Copper period. But whatsoever, as I made a mention earlier, gold was used only for limited purpose. Gold was used only for the limited purpose as such as for the sake of ornaments. Very soft, very shiny kind of a metal it was. Of course, you know what is the preciousness of the gold even today. So since the primitive time itself, gold had a great attraction. But let us go with another point. Copper implements were used. Comparatively, gold was not strong like copper. So copper was used for various implements like swords, axe, harpoon, another kind of a weapon, spearheads and etc. These primitive group of people started using 
copper in a large scale and that's the reason why it was considered as a copper age. Not only this usage was restricted for weapons but also it was used for the purpose of agriculture, fishing, fighting and of course for hunting. So these were the uses of copper. All right. So, well, the next stage is actually about Bronze Age. There is a lot of debate on this topic called as Bronze Age in India. There are many debates whether this Bronze Age had existed in India. But still, there are few historians who suggest that Bronze Age had existed between 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE. So naturally this could lead up to the early phase of Harappan culture. So this is a brief introduction about the Bronze Age. Well from your exam point of view there is nothing like a question on Bronze Age but still as a just an introduction about the Bronze Age in India I just added up here. But another crucial or another important age that played a vital role in India is about Iron Age. We don't have a specific timeline when this Iron Age had started but I'm sure but we are very much sure that this would have led to the early stages of the a great civilization in India that is Harappan culture. In your book it is mentioned as Indus Valley Civilization but indeed it is called as Harappan culture. And in fact, now regarding the Iron Age, once again this Iron Age replaced the hunting and the pastoral life it totally replaced the two hunting or the pastoral life and it was replaced with agriculture. So iron was used in a large scale and the men who lived or the man who lived in the times of iron age brought this iron into, a, into their regular life in more possible ways. And during this iron age the man had led a settled life. He started leading a life of a settled part and uh, in fact this iron age now starts up a new epoch. It was a great revolution, it was indeed a great revolution in the Indian horizon during the primitive times because it started leading towards historical period and predominantly South India was totally carried away by the Iron Age or Iron was used in South India by people of South in a large scale. So these are some of the attributes about the Stone Age and Metal Age. Now the next important topic we shall discuss and that is Harappan culture. Okay, so we are with a new chapter number three. Harappan culture or Indus civilization. Important point regarding the uh, Indus Valley civilization is that the name itself suggests that this civilization had its origin on the riverside of Indus. Well, regarding the aspect of this new chapter called as Indus Valley or the Harappan culture, there are a lot of things that we need to discuss. How this name had been called as Harappan culture and how the civilization had existed or even before that how the civilization had originated. Well the civilization and its antiquity we will discuss in the later stages but what really made the archaeologist to discover the one of the oldest, oldest civilization in the world. So in that attributes, let us now examine how this civilization was excavated. Important factors and important names such as Charles Mason. In the year 1826, in the year 1826, he visited this site of Harappa. He noted a 
a very uh, mound and he was wandering from or he was just wandering at this region trying to locate the old civilization but he could not find any of the uh, remains or anything there but he could find only the mound perhaps he thought this mound would have been the same place where an alexander where the macedonian invader alexander had defeated porus so his ideas were related only to a limited part as such as alexander's invasion but in reality after few years he made extensive research on this regions of baluchistan afghanistan and the punjab in pakistan made an extensive research in these regions regarding the or harappan origins and finally in the year 1842 he published a book called as narrative of various journeys in baluchistan afghanistan punjab this book started raising the eyebrows of many archaeologists unfortunately in india there were no archaeologists to excavate these regions the credit goes to the british archaeologist many attempts were made many number of attempts were made to locate the specific areas or the sites of harappa but many had failed in their attempt but there were few archaeologists who really brought this into light after the after this uh, charles mason next came another important archaeologist by name alexander burgess in the year 1834 he visited the site and in fact he opened up he opened up a citadel he came across a citadel or a huge building that was related to the harappan people which was found on the river ravi you understand it was found on the river ravi a tributary of indus so in this way he opened up the gate of excavations but 1850s in the midst of 1850s there were again many turbulence were seen in this area many turbulence were seen in the area because another important archaeologist a military engineer in the british east india company who made a visit to this site in the year 1853 visiting the harappan site he came across with some of the antiquities but he was not impressed he returned came back after 3 years in the year 1856 he came back in the year 1856 and in this period he could find some of the existence uh, i'm sorry existence of the mounds he came across with the mounds that existed in the harappan site so this created a lot of curiosity and he conducted a small excavation let me tell you one more thing here though he conducted an excavation there was no specific organization for archaeology still you need to understand that though he conducted a limited excavation and for his astonishment he discovered some of the seals some of the seals burnt bricks and the remains of few structures this was carried on in the year 1862 so this gave an impulse or it also vigorated the minds of alexander cunningham to start up an archaeological survey in india so with the suggestion from the lord canning with the suggestion of lord canning the name is mentioned here he was a viceroy of india then between 1860s securing permission from lord canning he started archaeological survey in india he becomes the first archaeological surveyor this was started in the year 1864 in your book it is not specified in your textbook it is not at all specified but i am giving you an additional point so the first establishment of asi was in 1864 reason is very much simple 
though this archaeological survey had started and all the efforts all the uh, all the credit goes to alexander cunningham though this was started for a few years it functioned in a great manner but later on this archaeological survey of india had to be shut down because lack of funds they could not sustain due to insufficient i mean there was a, a fund that was insufficient and it had to be shut down so in the first phase archaeological survey of india was shut down for 30 to 40 years once again once again it was revived under the leadership of alex uh, lord curzon lord curzon was a then viceroy of india so under his period in the year 1904 archaeological survey was started the task of director generalship was given to a 26 year old professor from the cambridge university who was well aware of all the classical studies this 26 year old person was given the authority of director general and the name of that young director was dr john marshall who further created great wonders in this site of harappa so let's try to figure out what this john marshall created at this harappan site the new dynamic doctor and a professor from cambridge university dr john marshall who had been appointed by lord curzon comes over to india with a new task on his shoulders and he during 1920s along with his colleagues excavated the harappan civilization or the sites of harappa after excavating this site it threw light on this one of the glorious civilization of ancient world between 1920s to 40s there had been many number of excavations carried on well in the period of 1921 from your exam point of view very much important dr john marshall along with his colleagues that is dr r b dayaram sahini dayaram sahini excavated harappan site which was at montgomery district of western punjab pakistan from your one mark two mark questions please make a note on this dr r b dayaram sahini rai bahadur dayaram sahini excavated at harappan site which is at montgomery district western punjab pakistan all right so this was excavated by rb dayaram saini further in the year 1922 dr rd banerji rakhal das banerji he excavated another important site which was at mohenjo daro which was found at larkana district of sind indeed mohenjo daro in the sindh language it was considered as mound of dead one more question this was considered as a mound of dead in sindh language altogether mohenjo daro was considered also as garden of sindh you can very well add it in your examination when all these excavations were carried on few more other colleagues of john marshall such as m s watts s r rao all these people collaborated for the excavation of harappa and mohenjo daro two prominent cities between 1920s to 30s they had extensively made excavations and they brought a journal which was published in london during 1920s history was rewritten altogether many number of old archaeologists of the world were astonished they were just astonished at the greatest explorations done by these indian archaeologists of those era 
Many number of archaeologists were even inspired to be a part of this excavations. But whatsoever, after partition of India, all these sites such as Harappa and Mohenjo-daro are now located in modern Pakistan. Of course, there are a lot of other important sites in India. There are many other sites even in India where it was extensively excavated from 1920s to about 1980s. So, I have already listed down some of the important sites of Harappan civilization or Harappan culture. Various archaeologists have made a number of research and excavations at various places. Many falls in India, majority of the important cities are all up to the Pakistan region after the partition. Now regarding the important sites, I have listed down the place of discovery, the country as well as the name of the archaeologist. Please make a note of all these names and these particular factors. You can very well draw a table and keep a track of all these things. Starting from Lothal, an important port which is found at Kambay, Gujarat. And this was excavated by Dr. S. R. Rao. From your exam point of view, one more question. And even if you go for any kind of a competitive examinations, definitely you can come across with this part, uh, this point called as Lothal. So you can just imagine how important this point is. Next one, Kali Bangan. And this is in India, once again at Rajasthan, excavated by B.K. Tapar. Like that, uh, like that twice, Dolavira, which is in Kutch of Gujarat. And this was excavated by Dr. R.S. Bisht. Then we have got another important city that was Chanu Daro, found at Sindh, Pakistan, excavated by N.G. Mazumdar. Likewise, Alamgirpur in India, UP, Y.D. Sharma was an archaeologist who excavated. Sur Kotado, Gujarat, excavated at, excavated by J.P. Joshi. Likewise, Rangpur, Gujarat, N.G. Mazumdar had been the archaeologist who excavated that. Kot Diji, Pakistan, and it was excavated by F.A. Khan. Banavali at Haryana, excavated by R.N. Bist once again. So these are the important sites and important cities uh, that was excavated by the archaeologists, different archaeologists in different timelines. We don't require all the timeline at your level because as you go for any PG or maybe for the competitive exams, then you can make a reference of all the different dates. But as far as now, as a second PUC syllabus is considered, these are primary important factors that you need to remember. Well, with the excavation and the discovery of these sites, efforts made by these archaeologists have placed this Indus Valley civilization or the Harappan culture alongside of the ancient civilization of Mesopotamia, Egypt and China. The Indian dignity or the Indian glory was placed among the tray of all the other ancient civilizations. And of course, it had been one of the greatest and one of the urban civilization that existed around 3000 years ago. Different historians and archaeologists have various opinion of date. About the antiquity of the civilization, there are different opinion, but whatsoever, it had been one of the urban civilization in the past compared to the other civilizations in the world. So with this part, let us wind up the class for today. We will definitely meet in the next class where I will be explaining more and more details about Harappan culture. There are many interesting factors. How the city was made, what are the significant features and how the life of these Harappans were. Everything we are going to examine and have a discussion on that in the next class. So that's it for the day guys. Stay home, stay safe. Once again, it's my duty to remind you that pandemic diseases, so use a mask, make use of the sanitize your hands at the most times, stay home, stay safe. Stay